Hello friend and welcome back to the channel. After a bit of demand down in the comments today, I'll be sharing what's on my iPhone. We spend more time than ever on our phones, so it's important to have the right apps and utilities to keep us in the right space and stay productive at times. I'll be showing you how I manage my work, time, finances, fitness, and so much more. So let's just get straight into it. So here's my phone, the iPhone 14 Pro Max in space black. And I've been using it without a case for a while now. People call me crazy, but no dings or cracks. Check out this neat little max safe attachment by Ma. Okay, so let's start by taking a quick look at my lock screen and the overall layout of my apps and widgets to get a general idea of how I organize my phone. And then we'll hop into some specific apps. And I just keep the weather and calendar home screen widgets. I have a weird habit of rotating my wallpapers when I'm bored, but for the most part, my widgets stay about the same. So let's take a quick look at the side panel here. And I think this is called the today view. Here, I keep some news widgets related to programming and technology and a widget from the Fop Mob app to track soccer matches. And at the bottom here, I just have a couple of finance widgets using the Copilot app like budget, network tracking and transactions tracking. I find it nice to have my daily transactions quickly visible. That way I don't get surprised by any unexpected expenses. This is one of my favorite apps actually, which I'll cover more in depth later. So let's look at the home screen and you may notice that I have a lot of the default widgets and apps. A long time ago, I really spent a lot of time customizing my home screens using custom widgets and launchers, but I like to just keep it simple now and pretty much just keep my home screen free of third party apps. And starting with the dock, really I just keep the things I need quickest access to, of course. For me, it's email, the Safari browser, I don't use Chrome or anything else on mobile. Then of course the phone and messages. So let's take a look at the cool new iOS 17 contact posters. What do you think? And then a widget for quick access to weather because Houston is pretty bipolar. So I have to be alert of any weather changes. Then quick access to the calendar widget, which I should just go ahead and mention that I use Apple Calendar a lot more than other calendars. I feel like Apple Calendar just has everything I need already. So don't have to rely on other apps. Then I have reminders and a quick look at my Apple card a widget for maps and my AirTag items and my contacts locations and a widget for quick reading list that I have bookmarked from Safari. And on the right side, I have all my applications. But here, what's important is the notes app. I've tried many apps like to do it among others, but for any time that I need to jot something down very quick, the notes app just gets the job done for me. But with notes, in the case that I do require more features, I rely on other apps, which I'll show later like Notion. And lastly here, there's Apple Maps, which is my go-to app for navigation, because I really like that they have built-in support for bike routes. So let's move on to the second screen. And this is where it starts getting a little bit more fun. Very similar layout where I have my widgets on the left and my apps on the right. And I kind of set this up subconsciously, but it makes perfect sense. Considering just how big the iPhone 14 Pro Max is, the bottom right region of the phone is easiest to reach for someone who's right-handed. So let's start with the widgets and then we could dive deep into the apps that I use most. First off, a medium-sized widget here for media like podcasts and music, which are my go-to apps for these things. And a widget for quickly checking out my battery levels. And surprisingly, I get a bit of compliments on my music. I'm guessing from the album covers that I've shown, I think it's all right. It's kind of a mess actually, from genres like hip hop, alternative to indie, and Spanish music like reggaeton. I was a loyal Spotify user and would often discover lots of good artists, but for Apple Music, Dolby Atmos really just made that difference for me. And actually Apple Music has gotten better with their playlist creation. And similar thing with Apple Podcasts, where I used to just listen to my podcast exclusively on Spotify. But here are some of my favorite shows like Hidden Brain, Colin and Samir, Planet Money, Lex Friedman, How I Built This, and a couple more podcasts that I tune into when I'm just not in the mood for music. So then we'll hop into my other widget here, which is the heavy app. And here you can see my streaks and the volume I've lifted this week. And going into the app, you can see a lot more useful metrics like muscle distribution. You can keep track of your weight over time and see your calendar to see how consistent you've been. I'd really recommend for you to check out this workout app, which is free actually. Oh, and also, of course, I'll be listing every single app down in the description as well. And moving on to this other widget here, which is the Cowboy app. And this is the app that I use to manage all my bike controls. And now I can conveniently turn on my bike with Siri. Siri, turn on bike. Of course, it's not going to work right now because I'm not nearby. 
so yeah and here there's a lot of other useful metrics like checking the climate battery levels air quality and seeing your ride history also there's a cool leaderboard and for my all time looks like i've ridden 371 miles which is nothing compared to these people over in netherlands and belgium but before i show you around this one i have to quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video which is taurus Honestly, I prefer the look of no case on my iPhone, but if I'm going out or doing any kind of activity, it's essential to have one around. The highlight for today is the Taurus U-Pro O-Stand K-Series. This is what they look like on the new iPhone 15. I'm testing out the O-Stand R and the O-Stand SS Shield. The O-Stand Shield provides just a bit more protection if you prefer that, and a pretty cool bubble-like design. But the key thing here is the circular kickstand, which is of course in the name, which you can use to prop your phone up either vertically or horizontally. And the ring is practical for many everyday things. I use it to set timers while I'm at the gym or to just set my phone up when I'm working at my desk. And I was quite surprised by just how strong the ring actually is. It's not like a flimsy rubber. Also, these are MagSafe compatible, so you can keep using your favorite MagSafe accessories with them no problem. Overall, these hit all the check marks for me. They're super practical and have a really simple design at the same time. Thanks Taurus for making this video possible. Check them out with my link down in the description and let's keep going. So the last widget I have here is my screen time. Do you really want to see my average? Whatever, let's look at it. So yeah, I probably spend more time than I need to be on social applications, but a lot of this is skewed sometimes. For instance, check out the creators app, which I use to cr control my camera. And next we'll start by looking at some of the folders that I have on here. So let's start by looking at productivity. So quite a bit to unpack here in the productivity folder and we already looked at the heavy app, but let's look at what else is in here. And first off, we have Notion. Notion is like a Swiss knife for me currently. I track so many things on Notion, like my notes for software development, tracking my YouTube videos and brand sponsorships. To get the most out of Notion, you have to use databases instead of traditional note pages. And whenever I do need a little bit more of organization compared to the Apple Notes app, Notion is my go-to option. I use it almost daily now. Here you can see where I plan my titles and thumbnails and where I track my software development notes like standups. And also Notion just gets even more powerful on the desktop version. So let's take a look at Superhuman. Superhuman is probably my most expensive app, but Superhuman is probably the best email client out there. But besides that, this app saves me so much time when managing my inbox and helps me reach the famous inbox zero with features like snippets, reminders to send your emails, which is really useful when you wanna follow up, and AI composing. Overall, this email client just saves me so much time and that's why I justify its price. Next up, we have ChatGPT. So if you're not using ChatGPT already, you're missing out on a pretty valuable tool that can double your productivity. I found that it's not perfect to reach a final product on what you're trying to do, but it's awesome to use that as a starting point for many things, from things like video scripts and templates to email templates and even coding solutions when I get stuck on a quick problem or I just forget how to do something. And it's awesome for generating boilerplate code snippets. And also a little bit more hidden with the ChatGPT app is actually connected to Siri, so you can ask it questions that way. Then I have GitHub, which is my go-to for managing my personal projects and all. I've tried others like Bitbucket and GitLab, but GitHub is the winner for me. And it just has a much bigger community overall as well. Next up, I have the Brilliant.org app, which Brilliant is a sponsor of the channel actually. But really quick, I think Brilliant is an awesome way to quickly learn things on the go from a bunch of STEM topics. And their user interface and progression system is pretty nice and makes the learning material feel digestible. And then I have Medium, which is nice to read articles on a wide range of topics. Then I have Gmail, which is what I ended up going for my account management on this channel. And it comes with a lot of other useful things like Google Meet and much more. And last up on the productivity, I have the Cron app, which is a pretty new app to me. Now, I did mention that I use Apple calendars, but this is a new one that I've been testing, which I believe was recently acquired by Notion. So a current problem with Notion is that it's not the easiest or most seamless to integrate with Google Calendar, but there's a fix with using Cron and syncing it that way which I'll be trying out because I would love to have all my important dates that I have on Notion sync easily and visible on my calendars. And now let's switch over to my work folder. And pretty much as described, these are the apps that I use to get around work and to get around my office and for team communications. As you can see, we use the Microsoft stack with Outlook and Teams. Then we have Jira for actual issue tracking. 
so hang tight we're almost at the finish line here guys and next up i want to start looking into some of my finance apps so of course there's a couple of bank applications that i use but there is one single app that pretty much brings everything that i use together into one single application and that's copilot or copilot.money so this is what you open up to on the copilot app which is the dashboard and here you get a quick overview with this graph of your monthly budget another cool thing is the ai categorization and also i really like this kind of inbox feature where you have to review your transactions that way by reviewing all of your transactions you won't have any unexpected expense that you didn't remember about some time later and this is another paid service but it's been pretty invaluable for me to check on my transactions and manage all of my accounts from just one place here's an example of your investments tracking and you can just track so many things here on the copilot app like net worth and income so that was just a quick overview of the copilot app i did want to get into my salary and expenses as a software engineer but that would make this video extra long so let's save that for another video real soon i'm a copilot affiliate as well so i'll be linking my special code down below if you want a free trial then for investments i use fidelity and Robinhood which I won't get too much into. I'll say that for the video where I talk about my salary and how I manage it. Another app that I'm constantly getting into is Stripe. And Stripe is really how I manage all of my online payments. So the Stripe application itself is actually quite bare bones. This is pretty much what a payment look, looks like when I send it over to a customer. And again, Sarge is really professional and leaves a really good impression on your brand. So then we have our social apps. And of course, these are pretty self-explanatory. What I spend most of my time in is Instagram and Reddit. If you haven't already, go ahead and give me a follow on Instagram. And for Reddit, I would recommend a couple of subreddits if you're into computer science, like CS career questions, experience dev, and learn programming. There's just a lot of interesting conversations and threads going on in here. So next up in socials, we have Team Blind. So the way Blind is, is that you have to sign up with a company email. That way it kind of legitimizes everybody's posts in a way. And it's kind of like a way to get an inside scoop in some companies. There's a bunch of interesting forums and posts from real workers in tech. Here you can discuss things like career tips and compensation or salary and a bunch of other useful things. And one last thing here in the socials is my own app. Well, it's not really an app, but just an installed Safari shortcut. Kind of just threw it in here randomly. And this is my own personal website where I have blog posts, gear lists. And here you can also just learn more about me. So check it out if you haven't already. All right, so let's move on to our other folders, which I'll be covering a little faster. And here in our photo and video, some of the standouts are the YouTube Studio app, which is of course where I see all of my channel analytics and see how my videos are performing. These last two videos are actually doing pretty good. So thank you all. And if you haven't noticed, I tried to get it to as many comments as possible. And this is how through the YouTube Studio app. And another insightful part that I like of the YouTube Studio app is to see similar content that you guys enjoy and some similar popular channels as well. So that's the YouTube Studio app. And next up is Epidemic Sound where I get about 95% of all the music I use on my videos. And what's cool about Epidemic Sound is that it saves you a lot of time. You get a lot of recommended tracks based off the content that you already have uploaded. And also Epidemic Sound just skips you the hassle of having to worry about licensing and copyrights. So here's just some of the songs that I've used already on my videos. And I may just go ahead and start creating a public playlist to share with you all. Then next for photo and video, I have the creators app, which I use to control my camera and the Lightroom app, which is how I edit most of my photos. And the last folder that I wanted to cover was the travel folder. Oh, and quick note on Google Maps, because I do use Apple Maps as my primary navigation, but sometimes I find that some of the info or data is incorrect on Apple Maps, like business hours. And of course, the review system is just much better on Google Maps. Then we have Flightly, which is a freemium app, but it's a pretty cool way to track your flights and it has a pretty unique passport feature where you can see all of your travel history. So let me find an example flight. And the Flightly app has some really nicely designed lock screen widgets. The Cowboy app for my bike, which we already talked about. And Autros. Autros is kind of new for me actually, but it's a really neat way of finding biking routes and hiking trails. And I really love the overall design of this app as well. So my last page is really just all of the rest of my default apps and some of the things that I use here that help my productivity are mostly the reminders app, voice memos, shortcuts, and the health app, which I have been using the new state of mind tracking. It's just a nice way to track your overall mood for the day and to have a history of your mood over time. Let me toggle it into dark mode because it's a little hard to see, but also on my health app, I have my workouts synced through the heavy app and my cycling through the cowboy app. 
voice memos like I mentioned. This is what I use for a lot of voiceovers actually and shortcuts which I have a couple useful ones like starting a Pomodoro timer and how I had already shown there's a way to lock and unlock my bike. Okay, so that wraps up what's on my iPhone and I'm thinking about maybe turning this into an annual thing to maybe get a feel for how my habits and organization change over time. Let me know if you found some of these helpful and if you liked the video, you know what to do and I'll see you on the next one.